Hello, welcome to Stories for Wonderful Children. I'm Dan Wendelin, your host and storyteller. Years ago, I began recording the bedtime stories I told my children every night. Now, we would like to share those stories with you. I hope you enjoy my Stories for Wonderful Children. A girl named Winella, and she lives in a very special house full of many special rooms. The most special room of all is Winella's room. There are so many special things about Winella's room that it's hard to tell them all to you. And you already know what the most special thing is about Winella's room, which are the colors in it. It's pink and blue. But you know, I'm not so sure that's actually true. Because I think the most special thing about Winella's room is that Winella lives in it. And Winella is a very special little girl indeed. One morning, Winella had just woken up and was still laying in bed, sort of enjoying feeling warm under the covers, when she thought that she heard a faint humming sound. It was a very pretty sort of high-pitched She got up to look around to see where the humming sound could be coming from. She looked all around her room. She looked in the magic tunnel in her closet, but she couldn't figure out where the sound was coming from. Then she closed her eyes and she listened, and she could hear that it seemed to be coming more from one side of the room. So she walked toward that side of the room with her eyes closed, listening carefully, and she walked and walked, and then she bumped into her wall, and she opened her eyes and realized she was standing there at her window. So she pulled up her blind, and she saw that outside on the window ledge was sitting a teeny tiny little envelope. She opened the window and reached out and got the envelope. She opened up the envelope, and she could tell here that it was what was making the... <coughs> sound. When she opened the envelope, the letter inside burst into song. It went, Wanda, I have a problem that I hope you can help me with. My problem is this. I have a problem with rests, a problem I think you will help me solve. Tea. Tea, thought Lana. I haven't seen tea in a long time. I wonder what sort of problem she's having with the rests. I thought the rests disappeared when we defeated the misconductor. She said, well, if it's a problem with rests, I really must get there quickly and help. Joey. Joey. So she knew that the first thing she ought to do was to go get to get Joey. a good breakfast. So she went and downstairs. And then she's going to get Joey. And she cooked some waffles and put some... Um, crushed strawberries on the tops of the waffles and ate them with a big glass of milk. And then she got an apple to take with her, and she told her mother that she was going to treble. When Ella walked out on the roof, and she told Joey about the letter, and she showed it to him, and he listened to it sing to him as well. And he said that he had a pretty good idea of where treble was, but that wouldn't it be faster if they took the cat's paw highway? And when Ella said, oh, that's a good point. She said, well, I'm already up here. Why don't you fly me down to the Cat's Paw Highway and we'll both go. So that's what they did. They, he, she got on his back and he soared down to the Cat's Paw Highway in her backyard. No, fly and they landed on the Cat's Paw Highway. And they turned around three times saying, Cat's Paw Highway, Cat's Paw Highway. You mean they flew Cat's around Paw three Highway. times? Take us where we want to go. Yep. And then they were both going very fast. And 
and then they arrived in trouble. In trouble, right? And they arrived in the middle of an instrument orchard. There were trees with every kind of instrument Winella had ever seen. There were viola trees, and horn trees, and drum trees, and tuba trees, and saxophone trees, and there was even a really, really large, very old and very strong tree that was growing pianos. Pianos? And they were not as big as like a grand piano. They were smallish pianos. But still, even an enormous tree like that one could only grow about three pianos at a time on it. Well, Wanella and Joey thought for a moment, and they thought about the fact about how they had needed music when they were in trouble before, about how they did not have the Omni Harp now because they had given it back to the conductor. So they thought that perhaps they ought to pick instruments to take with them in case they needed them. So, Rebecca, if you were Winella what, and you could pick any instrument you wanted, what instrument would you pick to take with you? Piano. A piano. Yes. So Winella did that. She, she went over and she looked at the different pianos. Several of them were still sort of green, and she could tell they weren't ready yet. But there was a, a relatively small one on a low branch that was, the keys were all black and white, just like they should be, and there were no pits or holes anywhere in it. And so she pulled on it gently, and she found that the piano floated gently to the ground, that it wasn't heavy at all. And that clearly, it was a piano that had some of the magic of treble in it. And so she said, go oh, good. I wanted to take a piano because that's what I play best, but I was afraid we wouldn't be able to move with it. But this piano is really light. I can carry it with one hand. So then Joey picked his instrument. Now, if if you were going to help Joey pick an instrument, what would you pick? It would have to be uh, no, no, this light is Diana's. So fly. Yeah. Um, what instrument would you pick for Joey? A tuba. A tuba. Now, tubas are also normally very heavy, but when Joey flew up and picked one, he found that it also had the magic of treble in it, just like the piano. And so they both got their instruments, and Joey... Wanell got back on Joey's back, and it was a sight to see this bird flying through the air with a little girl on his back, and he was carrying a tuba and a piano, and you would have thought that he was the strongest bird in the world if you didn't know that those instruments were super light. Well, Wanella flew toward the concert hall where the music fairies lived, and when she got to the concert hall, she could see T sitting out in the garden of the concert hall. And Joey swooped down, and as he swooped down, Winella could see that T was crying. She said, oh, T, what's wrong? And T said, it's the rest, Winella. Oh, I'm so sad. And Winella said, why? What have they done? And T said, oh, I just miss them so much. And Winella said, you what? And T said, I miss them so much. And Winella said, I think you're going to have to explain to me. I don't understand. Why would you miss the rest? And T said, well, before the misconductor came, the rests were my pets. And they weren't bad at all. And then when he, when he used my talent to make the silence, it turned the rests bad and shadowy. And... And even after we got rid of the misconductor, they didn't come back to me. And I missed them so much. They were my very best pets, and they would snuggle up with me at night. And, and, and I want them back. Can you help me, Winella? Eleanor said, well, I have to admit that when you told me you had a problem with the rests, this was not at all what I had imagined. She said, has anyone seen the rests since since the misconductor was defeated? And T said, well, no one's seen them for sure because they're all shadowy now, but from time to time, someone tells me they see a shadow that's shaped like a dog or, or a cat or, or a bird. And Alice said, oh, where have they been seen? And T said, you know, that's a really good question. She said, now that I come to think about it, most of the people who have told me they've seen them have said that they've seen them down in the base forests. When I said the base forests? What is the base? What is ba what's a base? 
Well, bass is both a musical instrument and it's a staff. It's a musical staff. And when Alice said, where are they? And he said, there, there are a forest that's down in the lowest part of treble, in the very center. It's a very big forest. We grow all our biggest instruments there. And when Alice said, oh, she said, well, shall we go take a look? And T said, sure, might as well. So Manila and T took off, and T led the way, and she flew them and flew them and flew them until they reached. What color is T? I don't remember off the top of my head. We have to listen to the music for her stories again. I think she's blue. That she might be blue. Oh, and I know she was green. No, that was soul was green. Oh. I'm not sure what color blue. Oh, wait. No, Fa was green. Pretty sure Salt was green. Fa might also have been green. We'll have to listen again. Okay, time for a quick story flashback. For any of you wonderful children who, like Rebecca and Diana and I, could not remember what color tea was, here's a snippet from the story of Winella in Treble, Part 7. She was dressed all in black and had black skin and black eyes and black hair. Winella thought that she was really very pretty. Okay, back to the story. Anyway, so they flew down and Winella could see ahead of them. She could see where the land slowly went down and then she could see massive trees. She had never seen trees this big. They were trees as tall as the tallest buildings in the city that she lived in. And at the very center of this forest of trees, she could see a lake. And the trees, as they began to fly down among them, the trees really did have really large instruments. They had grand pianos, not little ones like the ones she had. And they had bassoons and an instrument called a bass that's as taller than I am. And they had organs and they had gamelons. What are gamelons? Gamelons are, are bands made out of gongs and bells. What are gongs? Gongs are like a huge cymbal that makes a bong sound when you, when you hit it. And bells, really, really large bells. Well, they flew down and down and down and down and they landed in the forest. About the size of my chair? They, they landed in the, oh, much bigger. They landed. in our bed? Yes. They landed. They landed in, in the sea. Bigger than our dresser? Probably. Some of them were about that size. So they landed next, they landed next to the lake, which was the only open place to land. And after they landed, they spent the day. They spent the day exploring the forest, and they did not see anything. They saw nothing at all. They explored the forest, and Winella thought it was very beautiful, and she loved the sound of the instruments ripening in the trees and making, making music as they ripened. But they spent the whole day looking. Oh, lots of different music depending on the instrument and what part of the forest it was in. They spent the whole day looking, and... It was starting to get, starting to get a little dark. T said, well, I guess they're not here after all. And so they went back to the lake to try to get ready to take off and fly back to the, to the concert hall. And just as they were getting ready to take off, Winella said, look, T. And she pointed down into the mud around the shore of the lake. And in the mud were footprints. And there was something very peculiar about the footprints. They followed them. And there were three sets of footprints. But as they followed the footprints along, if you watched any one footprint in particular, it's the shape of the feet leaving the prints changed. They changed from cat feet to dog feet to bird feet back to cat feet. And when Ella said, do you think? And he said, oh yes, only the rests could leave footprints like that. She said, they must be in this forest after all. She said, you know, if they're still shadowy, I bet you they only come out at night and they sleep during the day. 
She said, will you stay here with me tonight, Wanella, and camp and look for them after dark? And Wanella said, well, let me see. And she got out her phone that her mommy had given her for her birthday. And she dialed her mommy on her phone and she said, Mommy, I'm with T and Joey and they asked me if I could stay to help them with a project tonight. Is that okay? And her mommy said that that was fine, but that she should make sure to get some sleep and she should make sure to get some dinner. And when Ella promised that she would, and they fished for fish in the lake and they caught some fish and they cooked them for dinner. And then they sat and they sang songs while the sun went down. And after dark fell, they were going to start their hunt for the rest. This is the coolest story ever. And I will tell you the story of their hunt for the rest in the dark tomorrow night. Thanks for listening to Stories for Wonderful Children. I created today's story, but questions and witty commentary were supplied by my children. The music was created by Brandon Thompson. If you enjoy the show, please tell someone about it or leave a review on your podcast provider. Our website is storiesforwonderfulchildren.com, and you can also find us on most social media. I'm Dan Wendelin, reminding you to tell someone you love a story. Mm-hmm.